You know, seeing as there is a 50% off sale going on at Barnes & Noble for the Criterion Collection, I figured, hey, why not do a video showing off what I've collected over the years from the Criterion Collection, and, you know, maybe maybe, maybe you get some ideas about what you might want to pick up during the sale. So uh, let's just get into it. Now, as you may or may not know, the Criterion Collection was created to be a... a a DVD slash Blu-ray slash 4K now uh, studio that would uh, license movies from the the, the major studios um, from all over the world and basically you know highlight movies that they felt were culturally significant or important to you know cinema as a whole and some people you know might look at Criterion as being you know snobbish or uh, you know maybe not popcorn type fair but. What's weird is early on they did dip into that and 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 you you'll you'll see some of them. My first Criterion release that I ever purchased was Armageddon on DVD. Yes. So the Criterion collection thought that this Michael Bay movie was culturally significant enough to put it in the Criterion collection. It's number 40. So it's one of the earliest releases uh that Criterion ever did. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's packed. It's packed full of stuff. Um, okay, there you go. There you go. It's fun. It's a fun movie, and it's actually a pretty good release. Also, in that same vein, another Michael Bay movie, The Rock. Yeah. Sure, culturally significant, right? But yeah, um, there's plenty of things, there's plenty of stuff on here. Now, one of the things that Criterion likes to do is they used to, they, they do these things, right? Where these little, little slips of, you know, maybe like a, a, I don't know, some, some cool artwork and stuff like that. But also on the inside of this, I found my receipt from when I purchased it. And I'm pretty sure these are for these two. And yeah, $20 and $30 back in March 30th on 2001. I was 25 years old when I bought these. So there you go, The Rock. Now, one of the major reasons that I got back into the Criterion Collection, I guess you could say, was because I'm a big Star Wars fan. And I heard that Kurosawa, Akira Kurosawa, was very, very influential on George Lucas, the making of the movies and all that. And I'd heard it for years, never really looked into it, never really thought about it. And then I decided to pick up my first Kurosawa movie, Seven Samurai. And I gotta tell you, it's epic. And I know that there's a lot of people that will say, you know, oh, that's an easy recommendation, blah, blah, blah. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. It's, I mean, it's basically what the, the Magnificent Seven was based on, is based on this story, this movie. And it's just, it's fantastic. And you get to see uh, Toshiro Mifune right there in the center. He's he's basically the John Wayne of, of Japanese cinema. And it's just, he's awesome. He's really, really awesome. Keeping on with Kurosawa, very, like I said, very, very influential guy. Yojimbo and Sanjiro, right? This also has Toshiro Mifune in the starring role. Amazing stuff. And guess what? Uh, Fistful of Dollars? You ever heard of that movie? Clint Eastwood, right? The the first of the no, uh, Man With No Name trilogy. He basically, uh, Sergio Leone basically ripped off Yojimbo. And so much that Kurosawa wrote him and said, hey, stop. So... It was, it's kind of neat. And uh, Yojimbo and Sanjiro are, they're, 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 they're great movies. What, what can I tell you? Another one, highly influential to George Lucas, The Hidden Fortress. Uh, get, let's see, a princess uh, is trying to, you know, get back to her castle, followed by two unlikely heroes. And the movie is basically told from their point of view. Yeah, this is... This is this is really really influential on the I wouldn't say the the actual storyline but sort of like some of the some of the 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 highlights of the movie very very influential and this is a, a really really good movie as well another Kurosawa film another one very influential to Star Wars namely the Last Jedi let's see if this sounds familiar you have one thing one event that happens that's told from the perspective of three different people so three different sides to the story. That's what this movie's about. Great stuff. Really, really, really fun movie. And of course, you got Toshiro Mifune in, I would say, uh, a bad boy kind of role. Um, interesting. Interesting movie. 
I actually recently did a short on this one. This one is Keijimusha, and it's 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 excellent. Another one that I recently did a short on, Kiru. Now this is definitely more. It's not a samurai film. It's not anything that's you know set in the in a period piece. This is a movie about a man dealing with uh, his his death, and it's and it's basically what it means to be alive. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful movie. I highly recommend this one. Now, this one is another uh, another series of movies, three movies, uh, starring Toshiro Mifune, but uh, directed by Hiroshi Inagaki. Look, I, I'm not a huge fan of these, but they're still really. I mean, if you if you like samurai movies, they're good. It's 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 good stuff. So yeah, check that one out. One of my earliest uh, buys. I think I bought this one maybe before I got into Kurosawa. But the Thin Red Line, Terrence Malick. This came out around, I would say, within a year of Saving Private Ryan. And it's like if Saving Private Ryan was what it's like to to see the like like see the battle. This is what it uh, feels like to feel the battle. It's it's definitely more introspective. It's not as action packed, but it's a beautiful film. And I think. Uh, probably one of the like most stacked casts ever. I would highly recommend you check out the Thin Red Line if you haven't seen it, and 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 you can you can take more movies because not everybody can do that. This one is very special to me. Uh, my aunt, at a very very young age, showed me uh, black and white films uh, and films that she she loved, and you know the silver screen, you could say. And I gotta say, this one is one of those that's always stuck in my head. I really, really enjoyed it. It's one of the first ghost stories ever put on film. And it is amazing what they were able to pull off back in 1944. This movie is really, really good. I mean, if you if you like, you know, kind of like those older black and white films, I mean, it is very lighthearted. And then all of a sudden there's ghosts and stuff. It's it's good. It's a haunted house kind of movie. It's It's good. It's fun. You should check it out. Lone Wolf and Cub. Of course, I've done a, a short on this one as well. But if this is, uh, if you don't know, this is what uh, a lot of the Mandalorian was based on this. But it's also the reason that I knew about Lone Wolf and Cub was way back when Kill Bill came out. And in volume two, uh, her daughter, I guess, spoiler alert for Kill Bill, I guess, but her daughter is watching Shogun Assassin, which was the Americanized version of the uh, of Lone Wolf and Cub. So I'd actually seen Shogun Assassin way, way before I'd ever bought this. But this was neat to see the full films in all their glory. I think there's six films. Yeah, six films in this set. This is one of the only large uh, Criterion sets that I own. It is Zatuichi. And this one is basically about a blind swordsman who travels the country and, and gets in adventures. And I got to say... This is one of my favorite releases I own, and it is so much fun. There's 20 movies in this set, and I got a really, really good deal on it, but right now I think it's, I mean, it's half off, right? So if you're interested, this is a good one. Just real quick, I wanna show you how this works. It's pretty sweet. Uh, so you open them up and there's the movie, and then the Blu-ray is there on the right-hand side, and then the DVD is in here. Uh, it's it's really cool, man. It is a cool set. And again, like I said, 20 movies. It's 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 awesome. It's 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 awesome. It's awesome. And it comes with this nice uh, book as well uh, with some, you know, some interesting tidbits on each movie. Great stuff. Now, recently, I've really gotten into collecting. I mean, these I've purchased over again, like the last, I don't know, 10 years, 20 years, whatever you want to say. But but I mean, for the most part, yeah, uh, I hadn't really collected a whole lot until recently. And like when these sales go on, that's the time to do it. It's the cheapest you'll ever find these. So the before trilogy, you got Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy, and it's basically their relationship over a period of years. And Sunrise, uh, before Sunrise is when they meet, before Sunset is later on in their relationship, and before Midnight is toward the end. I don't know. I've never seen it. But all I know is I really enjoyed Before Sunrise and Before Sunset. Still haven't seen Midnight. But this is Richard Linklater's, uh, I guess, uh, tribute to romance, I guess, over uh, a period of years. I'm really excited to watch uh, the rest of this. I've been recording a long time, but look here. Once Upon a Time in China, the complete films. There's five films here. Um, 
and the first three are with Jet Li, and then a new actor comes in. I gotta be honest with you, I didn't, I didn't care for four and five, but the first three were pretty good. Um, I love Jet Li. I think he's an amazing actor and uh, martial artist. And yeah, this was definitely one that I had to have. So yeah, check this one out if you if you're interested. Police Story and Police Story Two. Now I don't actually know if I've seen these yet. Um, but I'm going to get a uh, super cop when it, uh, I think it's, uh, it's actually out in 4k. Um, but I got this because I like the criterion collection. Of course, I think there's a, a set that has all of them in 4k, but anyway, yeah, the police story. Um, I'm interested to watch these cause I haven't seen these yet. Lately, what's been really fun for me is to do sort of blind buys when it comes to Criterion. Um, just movies that sound interesting and, and, and look interesting. Um, I'm a big Hitchcock fan. So yeah. I got the I got Notorious. I still haven't seen this yet. This is on my watch list, which is keep keeps growing. Any and and then uh, we've got Come and See. I hear this is really lighthearted entertainment. No, this is supposed to be like the ultimate. This is what war is like. Um, and I hear it's it's deeply affecting, and it may be a one watch. But I wanted to I wanted to own it. Uh, I I bought it so I could see it. And uh, yeah, this one's gonna be really interesting to watch. Um, I've got this one, Until the End of the World, uh, William Hurt, I believe, uh, this is from 1991, I don't know, it just, I read the synopsis and the, yeah, it sounds interesting, um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, who knows, who knows, I haven't seen that, and then of course, this one, Badlands, this one is one that makes a lot of sense, if you know me, I'm a big Quentin Tarantino fan, uh, I love True Romance, and in the, uh, in the commentary for True Romance, he references Badlands a lot. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a Terrence Malick movie. It's got Martin Sheen and Sissy Spacek, one of his earlier films. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but I'm interested. And this shortcuts, I, I've never seen this, I don't think, but uh, it's Robert Altman, and I love Robert Altman. It has a absolutely stacked cast. I mean, you can just look at all those people. It's 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 interesting to me, and, and yeah, so I bought it because it was on sale. Now this one is one that I've only seen one time and I don't remember liking it, but it's David Fincher, it's the game, Michael Douglas. Uh, I wanna see this movie again and I've heard many, many people talk about it. And again, with this, you get all kinds of extras and special features and that's part of the great thing about Criterion Collections is all the is all the making up stuff and, and sort of, like I said, commentaries on on how significant this movie was when it was released. So yeah, I'm looking forward to watching this again. Uh, this one I've only seen once, but I I really enjoyed it, weirdly. And this is, uh, of course, Terry Gilliam, uh, Brazil. I, I, I liked it. I remember liking it. And I remember thinking that there was a really, really cool DVD set back in the day that I always wanted and never picked up. So now I have the Blu-ray, which of course has all the special features that the, that that previous DVD had. So I'm excited to check this one out again. And this one, man, I've only seen this one once back, like way back when it came out. But when we were kings, Muhammad Ali, this is one of the best documentaries I've ever seen in my life. And I'm really excited to dig back into this one. Now, the other night on stream, I said, yeah, I picked up some Criterions, but I never showed them off on stream because I'm, I'm, I guess I'm an idiot. So I was going to show them off here. Look, Time Bandits, another Terry Gilliam film. Look, I love this movie. This movie is one that I grew up with and, uh, and yeah, it's got the cool lenticular. Look, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to watch this one again and dig into the special features because that's good stuff. Double Indemnity. I've seen this one time. This was on the AFI top 100 list. And when my wife and I watched it, we both gave it four stars. I don't remember everything about it, but I remember liking it. And of course, this is the 4K edition, but a uh, time band, it's 4K as well. So 4K, HDR, black and white. I'm I'm excited to, to dig into this. And of course, all the special features, great stuff. And then Thelma and Louise. Now I own this on Blu-ray. Um, this is going to be part of the Ridley Scott Review-a-thon. You know, thank you guys for watching those. But anyway, the Ridley Scott Review-a-thon. I wanted to pick up Thelma and Louise on Criterion in 4K so I can watch the movie again and, uh, and of course, go through all the special features. I think most of the special features are carried over from that previous Blu-ray. So that's going to be an interesting thing to check out as well. And then finally, 
another Richard Linklater movie. Days and Confused is the last one. These four I bought during the sale. So um, I'm really excited to dig into all of these, of course. Crazy watch list and all that. But man, Days and Confused. I watched, uh, I watched about 30 minutes of it the other day and was just completely sucked in. And I'm like, I got things to do. I can't, I can't be sitting here watching this right now. Just a great movie. And, uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited to watch the rest of it and dig into the special features too. Wow. This took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Um, there's a stack that's wow. It's, it's huge, but look, um, I love movies and you can tell Criterion loves movies, you know, that you can tell by the way things are packaged, the way that their supplements are put together. I love Criterion. So yeah, um, this is the one out of two times per year that Criterion movies go on sale. You never see them cheaper than they are right now. So if you're interested in these, yeah, go check them out. Um, I'm going to leave some links down in the description so you can go check them out. Um, I'm not sponsored or anything like that. I'm not. There's no affiliate links uh, on my channel. It's just, hey, um, what would I want? You know, if I came here and watched this video. Yeah, that makes it easy. But also, uh, there's, I'm going to leave a link to, I, I believe his name is Elliot over at Boutique Blu-rays. That guy, I, I really enjoy his channel. I love his content. He did a, a complete collection uh, review of his Criterion collection. And oh my God, it was like, I think it was over three hours and I watched the whole thing. But anyway, I'd be curious. Uh, I'd be curious to hear from you. Um, if you have any recommendations for me, I mean, you kind of get an idea of what I'm into. And, uh, and also if you end up picking up any of these, let me know. Let me, let's, let's talk about it down in the comment section. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.